Good morning. My name is Matt Trask. I'm an undergraduate researcher in the Machine Perception and Cognitive Robotics Lab at FAU. Prior to attending FAU, I worked nearly 40 years in the personal computer industry as a system designer, architect, and software engineer. My current research is focused on the Internet of Things. In case you're not familiar, this is the idea that there are many smart devices connected to the Internet, such as your toaster, your thermostat, and of course your cell phone. And what I like to say is the canonical architecture for the Internet of Things is the Siri model, the idea that you have a sensor, a microphone, that gathers data, and it's part of the phone that's connected to the Internet, so it sends the data over the Internet to very powerful servers in the cloud who process the voice data and send back the text. There are other smart sensors like this that are cloud connected that have the job of gathering data in one form or another and sending it to the cloud. Collectively, this is the Internet of Things. The problem with this model is too much sensor data. A smart sensor can generate literally thousands of data points per minute and flood the network with data. This is compounded by potentially unreliable networks. For example, an autonomous vehicle that's connected to the internet with a radio may lose its connection when it drives through a tunnel or underneath a bridge. The solution to this problem is deploying machine learning at the edges of the network by using systems that are capable of doing the deep network processing that we currently do in machine learning. One example of this is embedded GPU systems. While these have higher functionality, they have higher cost, but these are functionally identical to the cloud-based systems that we use today. The alternative is edge technologies, small, low-cost chips that are designed to be built directly into sensors and embedded systems. The idea of edge technologies is that we can extract the learned model from a deep neural network and deploy it on a chip with a simple network in it so that it can be run locally rather than having to transmit all of the data over the network. In our evaluation, we looked at a number of these edge technologies. The first one was called the Intel Movidius Vision Processor. This $79 device is in the format of a USB stick, so it plugs directly into a Raspberry Pi computer. You can see it's set up here with a Raspberry Pi camera. The program in the box to the right-hand side is an image processing program that you can see is being run against a stream of video data. You can see that there's a yellow box been drawn around the bus and the automobile in the video stream, and each one has been labeled with the correct label, either bus or car. Our investigation showed an approximate 10 times speed up over using a Raspberry Pi alone. In our assessment, we found the device very easy to deploy with a Raspberry Pi and learned that it's scalable to multiple units. Because it is a USB device, we can connect more than one at a time to a CPU to increase the amount of data throughput in processing. The next device we evaluated is the NeuroMem chip. A NeuroMem chip has 576 hardware neurons in it that are used to process incoming data vectors, where a vector is an array of data such as image data. The NeuroMem chip is used to build NeuroShield, an evaluation board that plugs into a standard Arduino computer, and it has one NeuroMem chip on it plus an FPGA that holds the whole system together. These NeuroShields can be augmented with additional modules known as NeuroBricks. Each NeuroBrick has two NeuroMem chips on it, for an additional 1,152 additional neurons. Our assessment of the NeuroMem is that it is an older technology based on single layer networks. An interesting data point was that it was licensed by Intel and designed into their Curie CPU module that's used in the Arduino 101. The NeuroMem chip has an interesting broadcast architecture. When it receives a vector of data, such as an image, it immediately in parallel broadcasts them to every single neuron in the chip. So they are now processing in parallel as they seek to inference which image this one is. These are very inexpensive and evaluation boards are available on Amazon. We found this product particularly difficult to work with 
because it appears to have been the property of three different companies through its life, and there are circular relationships between the companies. When doing the tutorial information that's provided by one of them, I often find a link to documentation on one of the other websites from one of the other companies, and at one point I found a completely circular reference that brought me right back to where I started with no additional information. The example code that is provided for this device, as is done with all small evaluation boards, should show its basic functionality and provide a jump start. I found that none of the example code actually worked as delivered, and this appears to be an unsupported product, perhaps an older product from a company that may not be so interested in it anymore. The next thing we looked at were GPU systems. We have NVIDIA Jetson TX2 systems as our standard platform in the MPCR lab. This is what we build into all of our robotic systems that we're currently developing. In addition to the Jetson, which is a fairly high-powered device used in some current autonomous vehicles that operate over the road, they have now announced the Jetson Xavier, which is claimed to have 20 times the performance of the TX2. So this is our upward mobility path as we bring our technologies forward into more complex systems. Even more interesting was the recent announcement of the NVIDIA Jetson Nano, a $99 board the size of a Raspberry Pi. As you can see, it has all of the I.O. connectors built into it, and that large heat sink covers a GPU module that has about half of the horsepower of a Jetson TX2 for $99. Google uses custom chips in their cloud-based servers. When you're running TensorFlow, sometimes you get to run on TPUs, tensor processing units, which are hardware accelerators for TensorFlow. Last fall, they announced a tiny chip called the Edge TPU for use in embedded systems. This is a single layer neural network that cannot be trained because that requires multiple layers or a deep neural network. However, the output of a deep neural network is known as the graph, the result of the learning or the training. And this graph can be extracted and run in an Edge TPU system that can do differentiation right at the edge of the network without having to send data over the network in order to do it. This device is currently in beta test and the MPCR lab is a member of the beta program. It's available now for beta testers in a memory stick format and a Raspberry Pi format for under $150. So in the future with smarter sensors we can make all kinds of products potentially like this diabetic scale, a scale that uses a Raspberry Pi and a Movidius to take an image of the feet of a diabetic patient while they are weighing themselves.